So we're going to move now to, to Bob Corbett, who is going to tell us, um, who's also with your organization, SDS, and Bob's going to talk about radiological safety during decommissioning. Bob, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you. Uh, I'm the Radiation Protection Manager for SDS at San Onofre. Uh, I retired in 2013 from Southern California Edison uh, after 30 years at Songs. 25 of those years were in the Radiation Protection uh, Department. As the SCE Radiation Protection uh, Manager, my primary responsibility was always the radiological health and safety of plant workers and the public. Uh, I moved to San Clemente in 1982. I've lived there during my term at San Onofre. Many of my family members live in San Clemente as well as their surrounding uh, communities. Let's go to the next slide. Okay. The radiological health and safety of plant workers and the public will remain my number one priority. Uh, you have my commitment that it will continue to be my primary focus throughout the decommissioning. SDS has staffed the Radiation Protection Department with fully qualified and trained personnel that meet or exceed national ANSI standards and song-specific performance uh, requirements. Additionally, many of the individuals that we have hired have extensive decommissioning experience. A core responsibility of Radiation Protection Department is maintaining the control of radioactive material. It is confined to appropriately posted and controlled areas or as waste that is correctly packaged and prepared for shipment. We accomplish this through several ways. We do radiation contamination uh, surveys. We will analyze soils, concrete, and liquids. We also do continuous air monitoring and also by utilizing tenting during the demolition activities to confine it to isolated areas. Upon the completion of decommissioning and our final site surveys, we will be returning this, uh, the site without restrictions to the United States Navy for their use as they see fit. With that, I'll take any questions. Any questions? I, I have one, but I'm going to hold until to see if anybody else has any questions. Can I, um, Ted Quinn? The, the new monitor that we just saw a picture of earlier, the monitor that's a, a site area monitor that's the, the, for the public sends messages to the public. For the ISPC? Yeah, for the ISPC. Okay. So that's, that's, that's on an adjacent pad to where the work will be done. Is that integrated in your, or is that just not connected with the? Um... That is independent from the process and the, and, and the monitoring that we will do for the, for the uh, demolition. Okay. That is purely independent. Okay. I th purely what? Hold on a second. Purely independent. Will you be um, instituting some of the, you know, corrective action programs that were learned from the, the incidences that we've already gone through? Have you, are you? taking on some of those lessons learned in your procedures? Uh, the short answer to that is, 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 is a yes. I've been there for two, uh, two uh, years now, and um, Southern California Edison has been very proactive in sharing those, uh, those lessons learned with SDS to ensure that we capture those so that we don't make the same mistakes. Thank you. My the last comment I'll make is um, one of the things that's really striking about visiting the Zion site, which is north of Chicago, is that it's in a very remote location. So you had tents, but there weren't a lot of people there. In fact, I think they stopped having community engagement meetings because no one showed up, um, which is certainly not the case here. And so I think the members of the community would be very interested to have your assessment not now, but as this unfolds, mm -hmm. of what are the expected levels of dust, of any radiological releases, of noise outside the tents, because you're going to have this operation going on right next to a major highway, right next to a state beach, right? Other, it's going to be very exposed to the public, and I think right now people just don't know what to expect. Will the tents mean that they don't hear anything? Um, will, will it be noisy like a normal construction site? It would just be helpful to understand that in some more detail. So we can bring that to you, but obviously we have planned, as Tom's talked about, with tenting, with negative uh, ventilation, with continuous air monitoring. We don't anticipate any releases of radioactive material through the air that would get to the public. 
know, it would just be helpful to calibrate people's expectations. Doug, did you want to comment on this? Well, David, yeah, that's a broader uh, subject that we should talk about at a future meeting. We have mitigation plans for environmentally sensitive <laughs> areas, uh, bird nesting, um, mitigation plans for noise, mitigation plans for dust that affects uh, everything that SDS will be doing from demolition on site to shipping. So we will be sharing with that uh, those plans at a future meeting in some detail as we progress. Yeah, and we looked at this a few years ago with the CEQA uh, applications, and then I don't, we really haven't looked at it since, and it would be nice to get a refresh on that. Right. Okay. Thank you. Uh, we should